Hi, Peter Charles here for Fly Fly Fishing. And in this particular video, I'm going to get into a subject that seems to get batted around a lot on various online forums. And that's this idea of, you know, are you getting your value out of an expensive rod? Should you be buying an expensive rod or, or a modest price rod or even a cheap one? And I'm assuming you have the money to buy the expensive one, because if you don't, this is a moot question. I mean, you're not going to buy one. But if you have the money and you say, do I want to buy a cheap one or an expensive fly rod? You know, what do I get? Is it worth the money? Is it worth the effort? And the reality is it depends on you. Uh, I want to just talk about my w tendencies in various things that I, I do and buy, and I'm all over the map. And some things I like expensive, and some things I don't. Uh, and it really just depends on what it is and how I think of it. And so let's start with, you know, tools, screwdriver. This is a budget screwdriver, but I like good tools. So, you know, the end is nice and clean and neat. It's not been dinged or twisted or out of shape. I keep my tools in good shape, but I don't buy expensive stuff. I know some people who, you know, have a screwdriver like this, the end will be all rounded off. It'll be all rusty. They'll still use it. That would drive me nuts. I couldn't use a screwdriver that was in that condition. So I've always liked good tools. When it came to my cameras, I mean, this is a relatively pricey camera, but it's not pro-grade. And to me, to buy a pro-grade camera is just a waste of money and a waste of time. I, I will get enough fun out of, you know, a, a upper bracket enthusiast camera, amateur camera, than uh, to go for an expensive pro camera. When it comes to whiskey and wine, I'm a little bit more value-oriented. I've found that I've found, I got uh, cheap, no, I shouldn't say cheap wines, but modestly priced wines, modestly priced whiskeys that are perfectly fine for me. I'm not a connoisseur. I can't tell the difference. And there's where we get into whether it makes a difference to you, whether you buy an expensive fly rod or not, is can you really tell the difference? I can tell the difference between a crappy camera and a good camera. I can tell the difference between crappy tools and good tools. When we get into whiskeys and wines, hmm, I know what I like, you know. So if you gave me a $500 whiskey and a $50 whiskey, uh, would I get my money's worth out of the difference? Probably not. I just not have a fine enough taste to be able to tell the difference. But when it comes to fishing rods, I do. So, you know, let's look at my uh, NRX Plus uh, eight and a half foot four weight here. Um, you know, when we're talking about the quality of the build, I mean, the cork on this is fabulous. Uh, you know, beautiful real seat, high end grade materials. You know, when we look at the, um, you know, the guides, all top quality. It's a very sophisticated graphite. The tapers on these things are a multi taper setup, They're very sophisticated. Produces a rod that's very light, very low swing weight. It tracks very accurately, which is something a lot of cheaper rods don't do all that well. It uh, has great sensitivity. Uh, you can drop flies in very a short distance with precision you can go further with them if you have to it's got enough distance in it that if you have to cast fire you can so it's got a lot of things going for it that a cheap rod will do but just not as well and the the, the reality is if you cannot tell the difference if i put these in your hand and i put tape over the label i said here's a cheap rod and here's an expensive one now tell me which one is which and you can't tell the difference Probably be a waste of money buying a good rod, wouldn't it? So what I'm getting out of here is how discerning are you with your fly rods? There's also the aesthetic of simply owning good gear. Uh, some people like the status of owning good gear. Nothing wrong with that. You know, uh, some people knock that. I don't. Uh, I mean, like I've talked about Leicas in, in the previous video for cameras. I mean, I'll never own a Leica. It's, I can afford to buy a Leica, but I won't, I won't ever buy one. Uh, it's just not worth my while. You know, I get perfectly serv serviceable results on my Fujifilm cameras. So for me to buy a Leica, it's, you know, I'm tossing money out the window. So that's what I'm saying is it depends on us. Depends on whether you can appreciate the, the fact this is a high-end fly rod that costs a lot of money. And if uh, you can't appreciate it, well, it's probably not worth it. But if you can, then it is worth it. And one of my friends says you'll catch more fish on an expensive fly rod versus a cheap one. 
He said, because you'll fish the expensive fly web more just to justify how much money you put into it. So he had a point. It's true. You'll get out in the river a lot more with a good one. And I think you just end up, well, you know, this is an overused term. I mean, it gets used in all the marketing bump, but it's true. You will end up with a better experience. At the end of the day, it's just a nicer fishing experience than with a clumsier rod, a rod that doesn't track well, a rod that has heavy swing weight, a rod that's not particularly uh, that, you know, forgiving in short distances, that sort of thing. You know, I've seen lots of rods out there. I've had, I've t cast a Im huge number of rods, types of rods, brands of rods, owned a whole bunch. So, you know, I've had a, a lot of different fly rods in my hand. And yes, usually uh, I can tell the difference between a good, good high-end one and a, a modestly priced one. I have, there are a few exceptions out there. I won't say the brand, but one particular company, their high-end rod finished well below their mid-price rod in a Yellowstone shootout. That shouldn't happen, but that's rare. Usually if you're buying a high-end rod, you're getting better performance, better quality components, and to use that overused word, a better experience. So does that matter to you? If it does, and you can afford the high-end rod, go for it. If you can't uh, appreciate it, or it doesn't matter to you, like me with whiskeys and wines, if I like the taste, that's good enough. You know, I, I'm, I don't have a discerning enough palate to be able to taste a really good Burgundy and a, an average Burgundy and say, oh, that really good Burgundy is a great wine and this is, eh. No, I don't have that kind of palate. So for me, it's a waste of money. Uh, and I don't do high-end photography. I don't need pro-grade gear. I don't need full frame sensors. I don't need medium formats. So it's where, what can you appreciate? And, uh, and I don't think you should have to feel like you have to justify your purchase. You know, if you've bought, you know, a rod like this, which sets you back quite a bit of money and you enjoy fishing it, that's all that matters. Don't, don't try to justify it. Just fish it and enjoy it. And if you like the cheaper stuff, fine. Yeah, buy the cheaper stuff. Uh, as I say, it depends on you. And uh, the reason why we, we sell rods like this is because there's enough people out there who appreciate the really good stuff. So there you go. Should you buy a, an expensive rod? That depends on you. Cheers.